Hi, this is Tim Hodges with another short video on abstract linear algebra. Today we're going to talk about maximal linearly independent subsets. <clears throat> In particular, I want to talk about the proof of the following result. That if we have a finite set that spans a vector space V, then any maximal linearly independent subset of S is a basis of V. So let's start by just recalling the basic definitions that are involved here. Remember that a subset V1 up to Vn of a vector space is linearly independent if there are no non-trivial linear combinations of these elements equal to zero. In other words, whenever we have A1, V1 plus An, Vn equal to zero, then all of these coefficients, all of these A's must equal zero. Secondly, the span of a set V1 up to Vn is the set of all possible linear combinations of the Vi uh, with coefficients in the field K. We denote this by the span of V1 up to Vn, and it's easy to see that this is a vector subspace. We say the set V1 up to Vn spans V, if this span is equal to V. So in that case, any element of V can be written as a linear combination of these V1 up to Vn. Finally, a basis is a subset of a vector space that's both linearly independent and spans V. So this means that any element can be written uniquely as a linear combination of these V1 Let's start by uh, proving the following little lemma that's not very complicated. It says that if we have a linearly independent subset of a vector space V, V1 up to Vn, and if we have any other element of V, then uh, the set V1 up to Vm adjoined with V is linearly dependent if and only if V is in the span of V1 up to Vm. Well, this is a fairly intuitive result. Let's just describe how we prove this. So first, let's suppose that V is indeed in this span and show that this set is linearly, linearly dependent. So suppose V is in the span of V1 up to Vm. That's a mistake. Then by definition, we have that V can be written as this as some kind of linear combination of these Vs with the AIs coming from the field. But then if we uh, just subtract off V from the left-hand side, we get the following combination equal to zero. And since this coefficient of V is minus one, which is not zero, then this is definitely a linear dependence relation on this set. So the set is linearly dependent. Conversely, we need to suppose that this set is linearly dependent and then show that uh, uh, V is in the span of V1 up to Vr. So suppose this is linearly dependent, then by definition there exist some coefficients A1 up to Am and A from the field, not all zero, such that this combination is equal to zero. Now, suppose A was equal to zero, then we would have A1, V1 plus AM, VM equal to zero, and not all of these AI would be zero because not all of the whole set was zero and A is zero. So at least one of these would be non-zero. That would give us a linear dependence relation on V1 up to Vm. But the hypothesis or the lemma is that this is a linearly independent set. So a must be not equal to zero, so we can divide through by A, move V over to the other side, and get that V is equal to minus A inverse A1 V1 minus dot 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 A inverse AM VM. So <clears throat> it can be written as a linear combination of these VIs, so it belongs to their span. Okay, armed with this lemma, let's now prove the main result. So 
let's let V1 up to Vn be a spanning set of a vector space V. And let's suppose that we take a maximal linearly independent subset. So we could write that, say, V i sub 1 up to V i sub r. So it has r elements in it. It's linearly independent. And any strictly larger subset of the original set is linearly dependent. And we claim that this maximal linearly independent subset is a basis for V. OK, so <clears throat> let's, let, last, let S be this maximal linearly independent subset. And uh, uh, to avoid too much complications with subscripts, we can assume by renumbering the Vs that S is V1 up to Vr. That doesn't uh, change anything in the proof. OK, so we need to show that this set S spans V. Now, the maximality assumption, what does that tell us? It tells us that if we add any of the other Vj's, for J equal to R plus 1 up to N, if we adjoin that to this set V1 up to Vr to the set S, then it's going to be linearly dependent. That's the maximality assumption. Now, the lemma tells us that if that set is linearly dependent, then the Vj must be in the span of the V1 up to Vr. In other words, for each j from r plus 1 up to n, we can write Vj as a linear combination of V1 up to Vr. So let's write that. Let's call these coefficients A, I, J. So V, J is the sum I equals 1 up to R, A, I, J, V, I. Now, let's go back and pick any element of V. We want to show that it can be re represented as a linear combination of V1 up to Vr. Since the original set span V, we can certainly find coefficients C1 up to Cn in the field such that V is C1V1 plus CnVn. But it's a linear combination of V1 up to Vn. Let's split this combination into the sum up to the point R and then the sum of the rest of the terms. And let's write the sum of the rest of the terms like this. Now, each of these Vj's for j r equals j equal to r plus 1 up to n can be written by this result as a combination of the vi's for i equals 1 up to r. So we can write, so v is equal to this sum of the vi's plus this a uh, little more complicated sum here. But notice that the only i's, vi's involved now are i equals 1 up to r. So we've essentially shown now that v can be written as a sum, a linear combination of v1 up to vr. But let's just take it through a couple more steps to make it a little clearer. Let's rewrite this summation here. Uh, by reversing the order of the summation, it's now the sum i equals 1 up to r of the sum j equals r plus 1 up to n c j a i j times v i. And we'll rewrite the first part of the sum here as the sum c i v i for i equals 1 up to r. Putting all this together gives us this explicit form for v as the sum of the vi's and of these coefficients. Which are so what have we done? We've shown that uh, given our hypothesis, any element of v can be written as a linear combination of v1 up to vr. So the set v1 up to vr <clears throat> is linearly independent by hypothesis. We assumed it was a maximal linearly independent set. And it spans the vector space. So that's the, exactly the definition of a basis. So we've shown that any maximal linearly independent subset of a spanning set is a basis of that vector space. Well, this is a very important result that we'll prove, will we use later to prove that all bases 
of a vector space have the same cardinality. Thanks for listening and subscribe to my channel for more short videos on abstract linear algebra.